The Estee Lauder Companies is a brand leader in the prestige beauty sector, but it's also built a reputation for championing sustainability and equality. Climate change, renewable energy and women's rights are all front and centre of the corporate messaging to describe the ethos at the core of its business. I'm Andrew Wilson and I'm in Davos, but I spoke to Nancy Mann, Senior Vice President, Global Corporate Citizenship and Sustainability in New York City by video link. Hello, Nancy. Good to talk to you. It's true, isn't it, that the Estee Lauder companies have been engaged with sustainability issues for quite some time now? Yes, the Estee Lauder companies, particularly through the leadership of William Lauder, uh, was very, very early into solar energy. And also Leonard Lauder and Evelyn Lauder were very committed very early on to citizenship and giving back. Tell us about the importance of dialogue in all this. You know, citizenship and sustainability is a very dynamic, interesting space. Um, and uh, we find that as we move along, we really do need to continue to listen, particularly to our key stakeholders, who are our consumers, our employees, and our investors. We also see consumers in our consumer insights where they are basically saying, hey, wellness uh, and interest in social environmental impact is not a trend. This has actually fundamentally changed the beauty business. Yours is a family company, we know that. And how much of the family ethos permeates into what your organization does? That's a terrific question. Values really matter in business. And I think we see again and again that uh, consumers, citizens, everyone is really looking for business to act responsibly. And every day, in every aspect of our business, we have choices. Uh, we, of course, really want to drive value for our shareholders and our consumers. At the same time, we want to respond ethically. And we have always had a very strong system of ethics, and training of ethics. I was lucky enough many years ago to take a course with Leonard Lauder uh, on branding. And one of the key pieces he emphasized is that what makes this company different and what makes us successful are our relationships. And what makes relationships with retailers, or consumers, uh, governments where we work, um, really is trust. It's openness, it's transparency, uh, and it's having common goals. So I would say trust, transparency, relationships, humility, um, and not just saying we act ethically, but really breaking that down and talking about it actively within the business. The luxury market is competitive, and the corporate world in general demands persistence and flexibility, and yet you see the future as being one of unity rather than competition. Is that fair? It's a great question. We see this as a great opportunity for Estee Lauder and all companies to really join arms across sectors and really make things happen in areas really particularly in supply chain, around ingredients, um, around factory conditions, around other issues, uh, human rights and supply chain, where we can partner across sectors to make a bigger difference. The Estee Lauder companies talk a lot about optimism and sustainability as a value driver. What's your experience of that? One of the core aspects of the work that we do here at Estee Lauder and what has made us so successful is what our CEO Fabrizio Freda has termed multiple engines of growth. And the philosophy really is, is that to build a successful business, you have to have different engines that power the business. What we're doing now is looking at how is our legacy of citizenship and sustainability, how has it always been? Um, a power, uh, a, a fuel for our business. The Estee Lauder companies have long had relationships with issues like breast cancer and HIV AIDS, social impact in general. We identify them with all these issues these days. Is, is that what we might call purpose-driven retail? I remember a, a Mac makeup artist said to me a couple of years ago, and I, because she had these very high numbers on Viva Glam sales, I said, wow, how have you done this? It was actually a leader of our Portugal business. She said, look, it's one thing to sell lipstick. It's another thing to sell lipstick and save lives. How important is transparency? And at the end of the day, beauty consumers really increasingly want to know what is in products and how the products work. The way that we're responding to that is that we are really focusing on ingredient transparency. And in particular, you'll see in our goals that we are focusing on by 2025, having lists of key ingredients in our products. How important is humility? One of the key ingredients to succeeding in citizenship and sustainability is definitely humility. Uh, it is our ability to listen and to partner and to basically say, we are not a perfect company, 
But uh, we are a company that has skin in the game, that we are deeply committed to improving the environmental and social impacts of the work that we're doing. And in order to do that, we need to not only set goals and transparently communicate on those goals to our key stakeholders, but also partner. How optimistic should we be about cross-sector partnerships? Well, I think by its nature, citizenship and sustainability is an optimistic uh, field. I think we should be uh, cautiously optimistic, or, or maybe better put, intentionally optimistic. Um, basically, we need to make things happen together. And I think the great news is that business is at the table in a much bigger way. You know, so for instance, as a beauty company, we're very engaged in climate and energy, whereas a few years ago, that might have only been the energy sector. You've mentioned what you call a brand portfolio approach. Is that about applying what you've learned in commerce to a more sustainability-focused presence? One of the fundamental pieces of defining how we can make a difference in citizenship and sustainability is understanding our business drivers. For Estee Lauder, we're a house of brands. We're the leading house of global prestige beauty. The way that we show up in the world is through our brands. What we do through citizenship and sustainability is not only make corporate goals and corporate commitments, we're working to create best-in-class abilities to have our brands compete in every different region. We also aren't taking the same approach to citizenship and sustainability in every brand. In fact, really, that's a lot of the work of our brand presidents and their teams. And we bring them the tools and we ask them how, through consumer insights um, and also through a lot of their employee work, how is it that we can power their business? And that might be different, for instance, for a brand that's sold primarily online, where we're looking at plastics and packaging and ingredients, or retail. So in retail, we're looking at best-in-class retail uh, as well as corporately building operations. So the brand portfolio approach is essentially ensuring that the way that we show up, you know, we're at the end of the day, we're a, a discretionary consumer goods company. We sell things, so and we sell things through our brands. And so our brands, engaging our brands and equipping our brands are really important. And so we need to have a practice that can help out, for instance, an Aveda, which is very forward-leaning on an environment, and for instance, Clinique, which has been very forward-leaning on social impact, and increasingly now also environment. What's your prognosis about the future of the corporate world? Can you envisage a future where corporations really engage with the sustainability issues and continue to thrive? Does sustainability make economic sense? What's exciting to me is we're now looking at sustainability and citizenship as an integral part of business, not quite frankly as a kind of nice to have, but how does citizenship and sustainability show up in consumer preference, in investor decisions, whether they be individual or institutional, and then how do we as a business be as good as that, at that as we are in other aspects of our business? And that to me is the exciting you know, uh, interesting part. Sustainability, quite frankly, used to be fairly one-dimensional. Um, now what you're seeing is sustainability and citizenship is becoming like finance or marketing, where there's multiple dimensions across business units. So we're really looking at, for instance, in Treasury, how does sustainable finance show up in our business? Or in um, product development, how does sustainable products show up? And that, to me, is the great opportunity and where we meld Honestly, the very technical information around sometimes citizenship and sustainability and the incredible business prowess and working together so it shows up. Great stuff, Nancy. Good to talk to you. Thanks very much. Thank you so much.